I'm Charles O'Reilly. I'm on the faculty here at the Graduate School of Business at Stanford. Uh, and I want to talk to you just a little bit about some of the things that I think we've learned over the last 10 years. Uh, recently, a book has come out called Lead and Disrupt, How to Solve the Innovator's Dilemma. And this book reflects some of the lessons that I think I and my colleague Mike Tushman have learned about how companies can be successful in the face of change, especially disruptive change. You know, there's a kind of paradox that if you step back, if you have the luxury that we do as academics to step back and look at companies over long periods of time, well, you see a very disturbing pattern. And the pattern is that successful companies often fail. And I mean, you only have to think back over the last five years or so. Companies like Blockbuster, companies like uh, Kodak, companies like uh, Circuit City. Uh, and it's not just an American thing. We see this in, in, com in places like Japan with Kanabo or Germany with Karstadt. That is, successful companies are failing. And it's not obvious why that should be. Because when a company is successful, they have all the resources. They have the people, they have the market position, they have the financial resources. Companies ought to be able to go from success to success. But the evidence is that they don't. And that's what we have been trying to understand. So why, why do successful companies get themselves into trouble? There's a very interesting and insidious trap that, that leaders of companies may fall prey to. That is, success really comes from having the right strategy and then executing that strategy. And when we say execute the strategy, what we really mean is getting the right people, with the right skills, the right motivation, making sure you're organized the right way, you're measuring and rewarding the right things, and by the way, having a culture that supports that success. And companies that are successful drive that alignment. And that alignment makes them successful. The problem is that that very success, that very alignment that makes them successful in their mature business makes them resistant to change. That is, in the face of change, it's difficult for them to say we need to learn new skills, we need to measure new things, we need, perhaps need to, to shift our culture. That is. Success leads to performance, but performance leads to inertia, the resistance to change. And what we have discovered over the last 10 years in working with lots of companies is that if you're going to be successful over long periods of time, you have to be able to do two things. You have to be able to exploit your existing assets and capabilities in today's businesses, which is where the profit comes from typically. But you also have to be able to leverage those assets and capabilities into new markets, into new uh, areas, to what we call explore. So you have to exploit and you have to be able to explore. There are really three things that have to happen if, you're if a company is going to be able to do this. And they're really leadership issues. They're not technology issues. That is, every company that we've looked at that has failed, it has not been because of the technology. It's been because the leaders themselves were unable to play two games simultaneously. So the three things that we think that every successful company has to be able to do is you have to be able to come up with new ideas, to ideate. And there are a variety of ways that you can do that, whether it's design thinking or lean startup or open innovation. There are lots of ways to do that. Once you have ideas, you then have to be able to, to incubate those ideas, to run the experiment. And that requires a different discipline. How, in a large, successful organization, can you run these experiments and stop the larger organization from killing the small one? And third, when the market says you've got a good idea, you have to be able to scale it. You have to help that young organization get bigger and bigger over time. That's really a leadership issue. And there are five things that we believe that characterize organizations that have been successful at this in the face of change. The first is there, the senior team itself has to be committed to running these experiments. That is, if there's disagreement within the senior team, if people are, for instance, rewarded for their functional performance, not for helping others, that tends to slow this process down. And in some instances, it can kill it. So the senior team has to be uh, aligned. The second thing is there has to be an overarching vision and values that say to people in the organization, we're all part of the same team. Now, different alignments, different cultures, but common vision and values. The third thing is that the leaders need to be able to run very different architectures. 
They need to have an exploit organization that's typically about incremental improvement, staying close to customers, driving costs out, and they have to have an alignment that's about sort of exploring things, failing fast, taking some risk, keeping bureaucracy down. They have to be able to run those two very different architectures. The fourth thing they have to do is to be very clear about how they can take the assets and capabilities from the larger organization that are valuable for the exploratory business and make sure the exploratory business gets those assets and capabilities. Because if you're not careful, what will happen is in the short term, the mature organization will always argue that they can use those assets and capabilities more productively than the exploratory business. So there has to be uh, the management of that interface has to be very carefully done. And the final and last thing that these, the leaders need to be able to do is to sort of resolve the inevitable conflicts and to make sure that the resources keep going to the exploratory units. Killed when, when, when it's not working, but if it is working, to scale it up. So that's what we have learned. That is, on the, on, at a conceptual level, this is pretty simple. You need to be able to explore and exploit. The problem really is in the execution. And in the book, we talk about a large number of companies that have, some have succeeded and some have failed uh, because of this. 